Hello everyone, my name is Logan, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing something very different, something I have absolutely never done on this channel before, and uh, it's play reading. Uh, I wrote a play uh, my junior year of high school, uh, and I have been working on it and editing it, and I revamped it and kind of changed like the entire thing for my freshman playwriting thesis, and it's done now. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure like this is it. There's no more changes to be made. Um, although who knows, you know, uh, but that being said, I wanted to do a reading of it. So this is the reading of, uh, this is a reading uh, done by my fellow classmates at Columbia College Chicago. And uh, yeah, this is a play that I wrote called, I Thought of You. Hi, my name is Kane Jabbar, and I will be reading for Liam. Hi, my name is Jay Sean Joy, and I will be reading for Jamie. Right. Liam comes out of his trailer center stage. He's the next act to perform. He sits in one of the plastic folding chairs and waits for them to announce him. He plays on his phone to pass the time. Jamie enters downstage left, a backstage pass around his neck. Liam? Liam doesn't look up from his phone. Listen, kid, if you want a selfie, come back after my set, okay? Liam looks up from his phone to see Jamie. He goes from shocked to angry in an instant. What are you doing? How did you even get back here? I'm Jamie Ferguson. You think you think I can get backstage? You think I can get backstage at a show you like? Like this? Right. Can I sit? Liam gestures to the empty chair. Do I really have a choice? Listen, did you see my Ellen interview? Yeah, you came out, I saw. Can we talk about it? Liam stands and heads downstage to the catering table. He pours himself a glass of wine in a solo cup. What is there to talk about? You came out of the closet. Good for you. Yeah, I did. Isn't that all there is to say? I want to talk about what happened. I'm surprised you didn't leave a drunken voicemail. That was one time. Six times? If I knew if I didn't do it in person, I'll never get the courage to say it at all. Liam gulps down the entire glass. He pours himself another one and returns to his chair. Right. Okay, go ahead. So... I said go ahead. I know, I'm trying. Liam rolls his eyes. Well, try harder. I, I don't know. You showed up here, practically begged to talk to me, and now you don't even know what to say. Typical. Liam. Hurry up and say it. I go on in half an hour. I'll, I'll go quick. Jamie takes a deep breath, nervous. So I came out as bisexual. I saw. I've been nominated for a GLAAD award. Outstanding musical artist. Good for you. If I couldn't pull it out of you, at least Ellen fucking DeGeneres could. You know her show has a toxic work environment, right? Leo. What? I was just thinking about you during the whole interview. Beat. Are you actually ready to have this conversation? For once, yes. And if you don't let me finish now, I don't think I'll ever be able to. Fine, go ahead. September 9th, 2008. Do you remember that? I'm bad with dates. Right, that's okay. 
so we were we we were laying in bed we've been together for about a year and you wanted us to come out as a couple you wanted the whole world to know that we were together and i couldn't say i blame you i was just you're rambling okay so we were laying in bed and you asked me why i didn't want to tell people and and i told you that it was because i was afraid i supported you in your gay glory but i couldn't do it for myself and i didn't know why but over these last few years i'm not ashamed anymore a little late for this conversation don't you think what it's been 12 years jamie i missed you and I wanted to apologize for keeping you in this in that situation, keeping you in the closet. You missed me. Yes. You're married. I know. He says nothing. I need to ask you something. Fine. You were so insisting on me coming out. Yep. Why didn't you tell people? Tell people what? That you were gay. You could have come out after we broke up, but you didn't. Why? Liam stands. Nope. I'm not doing this. He marches over to the tent and stands next to a stage hand while he waits to be introduced. He crosses his arms and taps his foot. Jamie follows him. Maybe you should go. Liam, please, I have to know. You really want to know? More than anything. I'm irrelevant. What? I'm the one who wrote the songs, but you sang them. You were the face of the band. Your songs are brilliant. It doesn't matter how brilliant they are. People only cared about you. They still only care about you. I, even if it is true, which is not, what does this have to do with you coming out? Why would it matter? I thought you wanted... I was out to the people I knew. Strangers who don't know who I am don't need to know. It's not like I have fans. Leo. You told them Five Leaf Clover was bad. They believed you. I don't. They turned against me. I left involuntarily, by the way. My love letter to you was shunned. They don't hate it that much. Except this, every single the band has ever put out premiered at number one. Except the singles from that album. Care to explain? Okay, but... But nothing. This low-level music festival is the best gig I've gotten in 12 years. You have to start somewhere. I did, but you kicked me out of the band. The fans care about you, Liam. They know you. Interviews, our old YouTube channel, remember? If they really knew me, if they really cared about what I had to say, Five Leaf would be our best seller to date. You really think that? I know that. I didn't think. <sighs> Whatever. I'm going to go get food. They have mac and cheese bake. Mac and cheese bake. Remember when you used to make that for Thanksgiving? I still do. That's great. I'm sure your family loves it. Liam heads over to the catering table to get some mac and cheese. Jamie follows. Can I ask you another question? I can't stop you now, can I? I'll go. I know when I'm not wanted. It's too late now. I'm invested. Ask your question. The two get their mac and cheese and return to the chairs outside of Liam's trailer. Jamie takes a huge bite. God, I miss this. Although it's not as good as yours, you're not really supposed to have you're not really supposed to ha have dairy when you're a famous when you're famous for your singing voice. 
Not that I would know. I didn't mean. I know. Mac and cheese isn't the only thing on this. Huh? Let's just say it's good to hear your voice. Stream me on Spotify, then. I do, actually, but I meant in person. Ah. Yeah. So, what was your question? You said you wish I hadn't dished Flyleaf Clover, your love letter to me. I stand by that. I'm going on tour again in the spring. I would like, I would, how would you feel if I added songs to the set list? I can't stop you. But do you want me to? I don't get why you would. Huh? Why would you want to play songs that people don't know? They do know them. Maybe so, but they don't know them to be any good. I thought you'd be happy. You would thought I'd be happy that you're making money from the songs that I wrote? That's not what I meant. I know what you meant. So why did you? You ruined my career, Jamie. Don't you get that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a little late for that. Do you know why I told the fans not to listen to it? Silence. I was scared and I hated you for wanting me to come out. I'm well aware. I hated you for writing a love letter to me, a declaration of love that the whole world could see. I get it. You hate me. Move on. Hate it. Past tense. Whatever. I thought that if I tried to erase the song from history, they'll just go away. That you'll go away that my pain would go away. And you want to sing them now because... Impulse reaction. Your album. Yes. I don't get you. It's about you. You told your fans it was about your wife. What would people think if I told them I wrote a love album about someone who isn't my wife? Right. Especially after I dished your album. Especially after I dished your album, your love album to me. Stop. I get it. Liam stands and throws his full plate of mac and cheese in the garbage. He goes to enter his dressing room. Jamie chases after. Liam. Can you go now? I have to get ready for my side. I just want to clear the air. I know. I don't want you to hate me anymore. I don't hate you. You don't? I never hated you. Oh, okay, good. I just don't understand why you decided to do this now. I told you I missed you. It's been 12 years with nothing. If you missed me, you would have reached out. Do you understand how hard it is for me? Clearly not. Jamie extends his hand. Liam takes it, albeit reluctantly. They return to the chairs. Impulse reaction. It helped me deal with all of my feelings about it, about you. That album came out three years ago. And? You've had three years to talk to me. Why didn't you? I still wasn't out. I thought you hate me. Besides, I didn't think you believed me that I wrote an album about you nine years after the fact. Right. Don't write me. 
You didn't reach out either. No, you can't go blaming me. It felt like you were ashamed of me. I was heartbroken. And I wasn't? Whatever. Jamie stands towering over Liam. It's not whatever. How would you feel if it were the other way around? If your soulmate tried to force you out of the closet, if they abandoned you because you wouldn't tell the world you were gay. Coming out is a personal experience and you tried to take that away from me. When I took it back, you left. I didn't force you. I wanted to help you, help us. I told you I wasn't ready and you left me. How is that supposed to make me feel? Miserable, apparently. That's definitely a word I would use. Yeah, well, you weren't the only one. What's that supposed to mean? You pushed me away. What? You heard me. I felt like it was my fault. Maybe it was. I was trying to help you. I didn't need your help. I wanted you to see yourself like I saw you. Jamie, I thought that you were the most amazing person in the entire world. Really? Duh. I'm sorry. Silence. Liam can't even look at Jamie. I said I'm sorry. Yeah, I heard you. I'm trying to apologize. It was years ago. Now, it's whatever. I didn't know you felt that way. It's over now. I wasn't ashamed of you. You know that, right? Yeah, I know. Okay. I'm glad you can be with someone you're not afraid to hold hands with in public. I actually love her, you know. It's not because she's a woman. Her and I, we have a bond. A bond like we have. Okay. You'll always have the spot of my first love. You know that, right? Yeah. We're soulmates, you and me. In some alternate universe, we end up together. I can feel it. You keep using that word, soulmate. I think we, we are. I really do. I like that thought. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Liam? Jamie? I missed you. I know. Do you think maybe... We could be friends again? Yeah. I'd like that. Me too. Jamie. I miss you too. I know. I think about you a lot. I don't find that hard to believe. You were talking, you were thinking about me while you were talking to the Ellen DeGeneres. I thought you didn't like her. Toxic work environment and all. I don't. But it's still a big deal to be on her show. Yeah. I guess it is. Yeah. Every time I think about you, there was a sense of longing. Why is this sounding like past tense? Because it is. And now? We're, t we're together again. I don't have that anymore. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm glad. Listen, I can bring two people to the GLAAD Award, obviously. I'm bringing my wife. Would you want to be the second one? Jamie, you don't... I want to. You sure? I mean, what would the paparazzi think? I don't care what the paparazzi think. I want you to come to the GLAAD Award. 
Yeah. Okay, I'll go. You will? Yeah, sure. Why not? Awesome. I will have to put your name on the guest list. The voiceover comes on. Liam Green to the stage, please. Liam Green. Well, I guess that's McHugh. Feel free to stick around if you want. I'd like to talk some more. I'll be in the front row cheering you on. You'll be the only one there for me. I'm proud of you. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you. Liam heads to the tent, ready to go on stage. Jamie hangs back. They both speak to themselves as the other can't hear them. I love you. I love you. 